for the feast of the beheading of John the Baptist. I shall read from chapter 269 of the Poem of the Man God, volume 2, 1986 English hardback edition, given to Maria Valtorta on the 4th of September 1945. Jesus is curing some sick people. Menaean only is present. Just to stop before I almost get into the, um, the reading, Menaean is actually encountered in scripture. It's chapter 13, verse one of the Acts of the Apostles. And it's, his name comes amongst a list of prophets and teachers who are described as being in Antioch. And amongst them is a certain Saul, uh, also known as Paul, and Barnabas. And then the Holy Spirit speaks and Saul and Barnabas are commissioned to, um, to evangelise um, elsewhere. So that's Menaean, just mentioned once. And he's said to be a, a friend of Herod. Or a former friend of Herod. But actually, um, it's not mentioned in this chapter, but I think elsewhere, I think he may be Herod's half-brother. So, to continue. Jesus is, only, is with Manaean then. Nobody else um, present. None of the other apostles. Or none of the apostles. They are in the house in Capernaum, in the shady kitchen garden, early in the morning. Menaean is no longer wearing his precious belt or the thin place on his forehead. His tunic is held tight by a woolen cord and his headgear by a thin strip of cloth. Jesus is bareheaded, as he always is when at home. After curing and comforting the sick people, Jesus goes upstairs with Menaean and they both sit on the windowsill of the window facing the mountain because the sun is shining on the other side of the house and it is very warm, although it is no longer the height of summer. Vintage will be starting soon, says Menaean. Yes, then it will be the Feast of the Tabernacles and it will soon be winter. When are you thinking of going away? Hmm, I would never leave, but I'm thinking of the Baptist Herod is weak. If one knows how to influence him to do good, if he does not become good, he remains at least not bloodthirsty. But only few people advise him wisely. And that woman, that woman. But I would like to stay here until your apostles come back. Not that I rely much on myself, but I still have some weight although the favour I enjoyed previously has diminished much, since they've realised that I now follow the way of good. But it does not matter. I would like to have enough courage to be able to abandon everything and follow you completely, like the disciples whom you are expecting. But shall I ever succeed? We who are not of the common people find it more difficult to follow you. Why? because the tentacles of your poor wealth hold you back. However, says Menaean, I know some people who are not exactly rich, but are learned or about to be so, and they do not come either. Jesus responds, they also have the tentacles of poor riches holding them back. One is not rich only in money, there is the wealth of knowledge. Few can confess with Solomon, vanity of vanities, all is vanity, which confession is resumed and enlarged, not so much materially, but deeply in Quoeleth. Do you remember it? Human science is vanity because to increase human knowledge only, quotes, is anguish and affliction of the spirit. And he who multiplies science multiplies such anguish." Unquote. I solemnly tell you that it is so. And I also tell you that it would not be so 
if human science were supported and bridled by supernatural wisdom and the holy love of God. Pleasure is vanity because it does not last, but quickly fades away after burning, leaving ashes and emptiness. Wealth stored up by means of various industries is vanity for the man who dies, as he leaves it to other people and cannot repel death by means of it. Woman is vanity when she is considered a female and desired as such. So we conclude that the only thing which is not vanity is the holy fear of God and obedience to his commandments. That is the wisdom of man, who is not only flesh, but has a second nature, the spiritual one. Who can reason thus and is willing, is able to break off from every tentacle of poor wealth and move freely towards the sun. I want to remember those words, says Menaean, how much you've given me during these past days. I can now go back to that ugly court, which seems bright only to fools and seems powerful and free, whereas it is misery, prison and darkness. And I will be able to go back with a treasure that will enable me to live better, waiting for the best. But will I ever reach that best which is to be entirely yours. Yes, you will. When? Next year? Later? Or when old age will make me wise? You will reach it in a few hours by becoming spiritually mature and perfect in willing. Menain looks at him thoughtfully, inquisitively, but he does not ask any other question. There is silence. Then Jesus says, Have you ever approached Lazarus of Bethany? No, Master. I can say no. If we met on few occasions, I cannot say it was out of friendship. You know, I was with Herod, and Herod was against him, so... Lazarus would now see you in God, beyond such things, says Jesus. You must endeavour to approach him as a fellow disciple. I will do it if you wish so, 